This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. The first real salvo in the protracted legal battle between the major film studios, on the one hand, and film dealers and collectors, on the other, was fired, oddly enough, not in Hollywood, but far, far away, in Mobile, Alabama, as described by Evan H. Foreman, owner of 16mm Filmland, on the front page of his 1972 catalog, a bulletin advertising used prints for sale. This is how it began. On August 19, 1971, four deputy U.S. marshals, two film company attorneys, and one film company private investigator entered my premises at 260 North Jackson Street, Mobile, Alabama, and seized six of my film prints as called for by a writ of seizure issued by the U.S. District Court in Mobile as part of seven simultaneous lawsuits brought against me. Without notice by American International Pictures, Incorporated, Columbia Pictures Industries, Incorporated, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, Incorporated, 20th Century Fox Film Corporation, Walt Disney Productions, Universal City Studios, Incorporated, and United Artists Corporation. The court also issued a temporary restraining order preventing me from dealing in any of the used film prints copyrighted by the plaintiffs. Hollywood had declared war on Evan H. Foreman. The civil case that arose came to be known as American International Pictures Incorporated versus Foreman, and has been described by legal scholar Francis M. Nevins in the Cleveland Law Review as the most important civil precedent with respect to the copyright aspects of the sale of film prints to collectors. The Foreman case came nearly three years before the widely publicized film busts of 1974-1975, including the seizure of Roddy McDowell's collection. In many ways, it anticipated the key issues that the FBI, the Justice Department, and the MPAA would bring to bear against dealers and collectors, namely the right of the major studios to exercise their legal copyrights versus the protections guaranteed to dealers and collectors under what is called the First Sale Doctrine. This little-known but quite important principle of law was first established in a 1908 Supreme Court decision, Bob's Merrill Company v. Strauss. It guarantees that if you legally purchase a copy of, say, the latest Stephen King novel, once you read it, you can sell it at a yard sale or on eBay, Amazon, and so on. You can also loan it, give it away, or destroy it if you choose. That particular copy is now yours, although you don't own the copyright to the book, and you aren't allowed to reproduce it. The first sale doctrine applies to just about any kind of media that can be copyrighted and sold, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays, or, in the early 1970s, used 16mm film prints like those being offered for sale by Evan Foreman in his bare-bones, eight-page catalog featuring such gems as Law of the Range, starring Johnny Mac Brown. More impressive than his legal defense, though, are the efforts he made to publicize the proceedings against him, to educate others about copyright law, and to warn other collectors and dealers that the same thing might soon happen to them. To that end, he used every means at his disposal. In his own 16mm Filmland bulletin, he published the headline, Legal Blitzkrieg Fails, and then asked fellow collectors and dealers, Who will be next? Surely not you! The film companies are now pushing for copyright law revisions which would give to the copyright owner of the film the right to prohibit performances, that is, projections, of the copyrighted film. So, you buy a film and show it at home. How could that be a problem? Unless you write or otherwise secure permission from the copyright owner, then conceivably you might find deputy U.S. marshals, several film company private investigators and or attorneys coming through your front door. While this may seem paranoid at first, remember that almost every film collector or dealer active in the 1970s that Jeff and I spoke with was visited by the FBI at some point, 